All right, everybody, welcome to another reading session. One of the many weekly reading sessions. God knows for how long we'll keep this up. <laughs> uh, today we're reading a, a famous one from Marx uh, on the Jewish question. And, uh, here we have uh, Joshua, uh, Hyperion, uh, Chaya. In space. And, uh, uh, space is still in thought he was going to listen. Didn't know if he wanted us to uh, show Bunker Chan, but sure, okay. Go, go visit Bunker Chan. Make space happy. And we're actually brave enough today to be discussing the JQ. That doesn't require any ba bravery. No, but like yeah. all the all right people are talking about people being brave enough to talk about the JQ. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a meme. I guess so. I, I don't listen or read any of them, so... Uh, we'll see. If I go quiet at any point, it's either because like, I'm disconnected or two dogs are fucking fighting tooth and nail to the death over a stupid bone. Uh, probably the latter. <laughs> Alright, let's start. Section 1, Bruno Bauer, The Jewish Question, 1843. Okay. God damn dog. <laughs> Dog's barking. <laughs> uh, all right. The German Jews desire emancipation. What kind of emancipation do they desire? Civic? Political emancipation. Bruno Bauer replies to them. No one in Germany is politically emancipated. We ourselves are not free. How are we to free you? You Jews are egoists if you demand a special emancipation for yourselves as Jews. As Germans, you ought to work for the political emancipation of Germany and as human beings for the emancipation of mankind. And you should feel the particular kind of your oppression and your shame, not as an exception to the rule, but on the contrary, as a confirmation of the rule. Or do the Jews demand the same status as Christian subjects of the state? In that case, they recognize that the Christian state is justified, and they recognize, too, the regime of general oppression. Why should they disapprove of their special yoke if they approve the general yoke? Why should the German be interested in the liberation of the Jew if the Jew is not interested in the liberation of the German? The Christian state knows only privileges. In this state, the Jew has the privilege of being a Jew. As a Jew, he has rights which the Christians do not have. Why should he want rights which he does not have, but which the Christians enjoy? I'm already on board. In wanting to be emancipated from the Christian state, the Jew is demanding that the Christian state should give up its religious prejudice. Does he, the Jew, give up his religious prejudice? Has he, then, the right to demand that someone else shall renounce his religion? By its very nature, the Christian state is incapable of emancipating the Jew. But... Adds Bauer. By his very nature, the Jew cannot be emancipated. So long as the state is Christian, the Jew is Jewish, the one is as incapable of granting emancipation as the other is of receiving it. So, Bruno Bauer, the first anti id poll <laughs> warrior. First woke guy. That's absolutely what I was thinking about, actually. Made me think exactly how, you know, an ironic brochure would argue against feminism. How dare you ask El for LGBTQ rights? You know, aren't you aware, you know, that <laughs> that is a privilege within the, you know, the straight heterosexual state? You know, by recognizing such rights to exist, do you not recognize the validity Oh, well, the proletariat aren't free. 
<laughs> no one's free, so that means yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, the... LGBT people don't have like a special. Type actually, of no. Actually, no. You know, this is fits more to um, the analogy of uh, sexual work. You know, hey, you know, we're all we're all prostitutes for the capitalists. What makes you prosti actual prostitutes any better? Why uh -huh. should you get any special rights? <laughs> uh huh. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, why target the sex industry? Who cares if it's run by misogynists? Because we all sell our labor in this horrible system. You're just a female supremacist. Oh, yeah. All right. Continuing, the Christian state can behave towards the Jew only in the way characteristic of the Christian state, that is, by granting privileges, by permitting the separation of the Jew from the other subjects, by making him feel the pressure of all the other separate spheres of society and feel it all the more intensely because he is in religious opposition to the dominant religion. But the Jew, too, can behave towards the state only in a Jewish way, that is, by treating it as something alien to him, by counterposing his imaginary nationality to the real nationality, by counterposing his illusory law to the real law, by deeming himself justified in separating himself from mankind, by abstaining on principle from taking part in the historical movement, by putting his trust in a future which has nothing in common with the future of mankind in general, and by seeing himself as a member of the Jewish people, and the Jewish people as the chosen people. On what grounds, then, do you Jews want emancipation? On account of your religion? It is the mortal enemy of the state religion. As citizens, in Germany there are no citizens. As human beings, but you are no mere, no more human beings than those to whom you appeal. Bauer has posed the question of Jewish emancipation in a new form after giving a critical analysis of the previous formulations and solutions of the questions. What, he asks, is the nature of the Jew who is to be emancipated and of the Christian state that is to emancipate him? He replies by a critique of the Jewish religion. He analyzes the religious opposition between Judaism and Christianity. He elucidates the essence of the Christian state. And he does all this audaciously, trenchantly, wittily, and with profundity in a style of writing that is as precise as it is pithy and vigorous. Pithy. I'll Do we think he has pithy. a point, though? <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know what his general point is, I suppose. Uh, we'll see. How then does Bauer solve the Jewish question? What is the result? The formulation of a question is its solution. The critique of the Jewish question is the answer to the Jewish question. The summary, therefore, is as follows. We must emancipate ourselves before we can emancipate others. The most rigid form of the opposition between the Jew and the Christian is the religious oppo opposition. How is an opposition resolved? by making it impossible. How was religious opposition made impossible? By abolishing religion. As soon as Jew and Christian recognize that their respective religions are no more than different stages in the, in the development of human mind, different snakeskins cast off by history, and that man is the snake who slaughtered them, the relation of Jew and Christian is no longer religious, but is only a critical, scientific, and human relation. Science, then, constitutes their unity, but contradictions in science are resolved by science itself. The German Jew, in particular, is confronted by the general absence of political emancipation and the strongly marked Christian character of the state. In Bauer's conception, however, the Jewish question has a universal significance, independent of specifically German conditions. It is the question of the relation of religion to the state, of the contradiction between religious constraint and political emancipation. Emancipation from religion is laid down as a condition both to the Jew who wants to be emancipated politically and to the state to which it is and to the state which is to affect emancipation and is itself to be emancipated. Quote, very well, it is said, and the Jew himself says it. The Jew is to become emancipated not as a Jew, but because he is a Jew, 
not because he possesses such an excellent universally human principle of morality. On the contrary, the Jew will retreat behind the citizen and be a citizen, although he is a Jew and is to remain a Jew. That is to say, he is and remains a Jew, although he is a citizen and lives in universally human conditions. His Jewish and restricted nature triumphs always in the end over his human political obligations. The prejudice remains in spite of being outstripped by general principles. But if it remains, then, on the contrary, it outstrips everything else. Only sophistically, only apparently, would the Jew be able to remain a Jew in the life of the state. Hence, if he wanted to remain a Jew, the mere appearance would become the essential and would triumph. That is to say, his life in the state would be the only a semblance or only a temporary exception to the essential and the rule. End quote. From the capacity of present-day Jews and Christians to become free, some uh, weird German name, page 67. You can see that for yourself. I'm not going to say it. All right. Einundzwanzig Bogen. Just means one in twenty. Twenty-one. So, any thoughts on this so far? I think he has a point. I know I'm going to get crucified by Josh Allen and uh, Chaya, but <laughs> I think we should work for the. Uh, Emancipation of all people rather than specific groups. Well, um, yeah, but we should, of position. course, you know, be for the emancipation of all people. Yeah. We should be, like, in this case, for the emancipation of the Jew as well. Definitely. As part of the human species. The well, problem that I have with the, the Jews being considered a chosen people is that. It's they who said it, <laughs> and of course they're going to say uh, that they were the chosen people, and and they're placing a responsibility on themselves as ushering us into a new era, or a, a better, you know, presenting themselves as effectively the Ubermensch. But what have they done to promote humanity? Yeah. It's I don't know. They I mean, I'm not. Of... They fucking made uh... communism, man, and they spread it and they keep it alive. Oh yeah, true. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I'm just not look, trying just to look at all the theorists. Right. This year. The vast majority of them well, are Jewish. Sure. And the best but ones that's... are Jewish. <laughs> well, that's it's just adding to the Jews conspiracy. which uh, control society through cultural Marxism. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I do agree, though, that the idea of the <laughs> chosen people can get pretty problematic, well, like, the, the especially whole... like with the whole Palestine situation. Well, the, the thing you have to realize is that the way that we interpret that stuff is um, more about responsibility. It's not that we necessarily think we're the superior race or whatever, but it's just more about like, okay, that as a Jew, you have these responsibilities and you but have why... to do these obligations. But why should those responsibilities not extend to all members of the family? No, we, ha we say that um, non-Jews have responsibilities as well. But different. That's but why? Why separate humanity? Uh, you know, I can't answer that. I cannot <laughs> give you a c comprehensive answer. Yeah, sorry. I'm not trying to, like, grill yeah. you or anything. I just... Uh... But, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, maybe there's a legitimate reason. I don't know. I can't think of one. Well, we do say that there are non-Jews who we are supposed to bring into the fold, in a sense. Yeah. But, yeah. We're not supposed to proselytize, though. No. And, uh... So you just present yourself as a, a pious, I don't know if pious is the right word, but you know what I mean. A, a good person. Yeah, responsible yeah, responsible person. And then people are supposed to see that responsibility and then be dra attracted or drawn to yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Okay, that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
I don't know. That, that was I thought that was kind of <laughs> tangential though to to this yeah, one, in which sorry. like, uh, what other groups were were actually you know kind of a oppressed at the time in the same way that the Jews were in Germany, for example. What other religious groups could we say that like actually existed there and that uh, would also when? have a movement at the time? You know, 19th this was century. Yeah. It's okay. 18th, 19th century. Uh, Catholics and Protestant Germany. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, Germany wasn't yet a thing. Like, remember, this was still, like, you know, the different kings. Still at the end yeah. of... Uh... Wait. 19th century? Yeah. Prussia wasn't... Uh, like Prussia was still, like, yeah. a lot of... Was the biggest one, but Germany wasn't yet a thing. It was yeah, still true. a project undergoing. But... So you still had the, like, the broken king fiefdoms slash kingdoms in which, you know, some of them were... Catholic, some of them were Protestant, and then you know Napoleon came storming through a quite mm -hmm. a bit of it and uh, made some reforms, but then uh, you know got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, unification didn't happen till like the eighteen seventies, I believe. Okay, so what are we asking? Like what? Like who else was pressed? like what other groups were oppressed in the same way, such that we can like point someone else to like why weren't you advocating for like their freedom too like, it's not like Communist. having like i mean it's like having <laughs> like different slaves right it's like you know we yeah it's like like one-sided abolitionism but who else can you point to at the time that uh besides blacks you know was were slaves in the u.s for the most part at least in the in the way that uh, they were in which we could point to so he's like well, you're advocating for this why aren't you advocating for that it's kind of like a white lies you know all lives matter versus like Black Lives Matter stupid kind of argument that people make. Because okay, yeah, like, because I because I get like what Bauer's saying, but I feel it's basically a White Lives Matter, ba like not not a White Lives Matter, but a All Lives ah, Matter kind Paul of argument. I don't yeah, know. it definitely I felt so. like that uh, when I, think I it read felt it. Like that. I like actually thought exactly that when I was reading it. Just felt like. Because oh, okay, because unless you can point, matter. unless you can point to someone else who was undergoing the same kind of thing, then you can't do that. You can't play this whole thing. But what you know, you're being picky. You're towards or favoring towards this group. Well, who else is there? You know, was there someone else to which they could ally themselves to? Was, uh, you know, could we say like it was the gypsies? Could we say it was like a? I don't know. So that's kind <laughs> of a question of a history. So you know, I'm yeah, not, but I don't know what he's saying here. I don't think is anything reactionary. Well, no, it's not about reactionary. Like, okay, liberals yeah, say the whole all, li all lives matter thing, not in a reactionary sense. They just say it because they're yeah, stupid. Yeah, but that's because they don't understand what it means to say black lives matter to highlight the atrocities. But it's, it's more the fact that you're obscuring how these oppressions actually unfold. Like, sure. they're, yeah, like they want to say, oh, well, we're all oppressed, so why should we care about you when all of us are op oppressed? And you're obscuring how these oppressions actually manifest themselves. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. not saying I totally agree with him. I'm just saying he has a point, like uh, in the totality. Sure, that you know, we should uh, want to emancipate end, all people yeah. rather than just specific people, and then like once Jews are emancipated, they're then brought into the fold, and then we emancipate all of humanity. Yeah, but, but see, that's kind I think of a, what he's that's saying like is idealism. that Jews want to. Yeah, I know. But he's he's saying that Jews want to be emancipated, and then like have their own you know section outside of the normal society and be just treated specially or whatever. And he doesn't agree with that, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that seems to be the case. And in that case, you know, I also agree. It's just like you know, you don't get to have your your special like Jewish courts or something, and like have those be upheld by the state. <laughs> no Sharia law, sorry. But they're the. <laughs> Chosen people, A.W. I mean, not, not that it fucking matters, because, like, cause like, shit gets settled like that anyways. You know, people choose to abide by yeah. those things. Like, we actually do, like, there. I think there actually is a, um, a, uh, bait din here in Montreal. Uh, uh, there has to be. But usually those special courts are really just used for civil matters, like divorce and stuff like that. It's really not, like, a, like a legal thing. It's just more of like, okay, you decide, like, okay, according to Jewish law, how should this thing be settled? 
and it's not really like a binding yeah it's just like okay. a scholar gives you his opinion it's not like okay we in the jewish community decided that him murdering his wife was justified no, therefore he goes yeah. not to jail <laughs> yeah it's not like that at all yeah so. okay that's fine though they can play courtroom stuff if they want i don't care god i can't imagine what it'd be like in a court dealing with a jewish uh, couple trying to divorce <laughs> Here we are. Scared. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go on. So, continuing. Let us hear, on the other hand, how Bauer presents the task of the state. Quote France, he says, has, re has recently shown us proceedings of the Chamber of Deputies, December 26, 1840. In the connection with the Jewish question, just as it has continually done in all other political questions, the spectacle of a life which is free but which revokes its freedom by law, hence declaring it to be an appearance and, on the other hand, contradicting its free laws by its action. The Jewish question, page 64. Uh, not this Jewish question, but uh, y you get it. Continuing yeah, in France. The Jewish question. Universal freedom is not yet the law. The Jewish question, too, has not yet been resolved because legal freedom and the fact that all citizens are equal is restricted in actual life, which is still dominated and divided by religious pr privileges. And this lack of freedom in actual life reacts on law and compels the latter to sanction the divisions of the citizens who, as such, are free into oppressed and oppressors. So in that sense, I mean, I kind of agree. It's kind of like... You know, there, you're not in a situation of right yet in which, you know, you actually are equal in a, in a universal form of, you know, everybody falls under the same law. You know, there's the Jewish law, Jewish law for Jews, Christian law for Christians, Catholic law for Catholics, because, by the way, Catholics aren't Christian. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Sorry, sweet yeah, Anista. Protestant, Protestant Catholic. He's Protestant. I've told you that he's Lutheran. Well, yeah, that's why. <laughs> They're the ones who are not the real Christians, don't you know? Oh, okay. The Catholics are? All right, cool. Catholicism no, the yeah, it literally means universal. You know, the, uni the yeah. universalist. Uh... No, I'd argue the Protestants aren't the real Christians. Yeah, sure you would, you left con. <laughs> But let's continue. When, therefore, would the Jewish question be solved for France? Quote, the Jew, for example, would have ceased to be a Jew if he did not allow himself to be prevented by his laws from fulfilling his duty to the state and his, his fellow citizens. That is, for example, if on the Sabbath he attended the Chamber of Deputies and took part in the official proceedings. Every religious privilege, and therefore also the monopoly of a privileged church, would have been abolished altogether. And if some or many persons, or even the overwhelming majority, still believe themselves bound to fulfill religious duties. This fulfillment ought to be left to them as a purely private matter. Page 65, continuing, there is no longer any religion when there is no longer any privileged religion. Take from religion its, exclu its exclusive power and it will no longer exist. Uh, so, I highly disagree. I'm going to create a religion. <laughs> I'm going to create, create a religion where I don't have to work. And I just get money. Just as and if you uh, don't accept it, then I'm being oppressed. Continuing, just as Monsieur Martin du Nord saw the proposal to omit mention of Sunday in the law as a motion to declare that Christianity has ceased to exist with equal reason, and this reason is very well founded, the declaration that the law of the Sabbath is no longer binding on the Jew would be a proclamation abolishing Judaism. Hmm. So I guess the uh, the omission of the mention of Sunday would be that you know uh, something about Sunday, and therefore you know we're no longer a Christian nation. It's kind of like you know how uh, it'd be like demoting like uh, you know Christmas or something from like an official holiday. It's like you know then you would say it's no longer an official Christian nation. Well, it's, it's not really a Christian holiday, anyways. 
Or if they took Saturn away Island. the underdog from the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, yeah, that's what they would say. And by the way, I mean, I I would say that's actually fucking true. You know, they should fucking take that out of the fucking Pledge of Allegiance. It was yeah, added after the fact, nation. like in 1920s. Yeah, it was. Well, they we should, should say we're in one nation above Pledge of God. Allegiance overall, not just the under God section. I the whole pledge? Yeah. yeah, it's propaganda. It really is, but, you know, we're Are against nationalism. Daring? Most Are people aren't. to say <laughs> that the, the state is not God? Because Hegel disagrees. Yeah. Dune made that too. I mean, he agreed. Not the United States. I'll never <laughs> consider it my God. He commands you to lay your life down. And it is your moral duty to do so. Well, actually, it'd be your ethical duty. Your moral duty might be different, but... That's like yeah. your opinion, man. Well, if the pledge were true, if we actually were a true republic, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but we're not. But that's a... We're Republican on name only. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. So he brought up the pledge. Continuing, Bauer therefore demands, on the one hand, that the Jews should renounce Judaism and that mankind in general should renounce religion in order to achieve civic emancipation. On the other hand, he quite consistently regards the political abolition of religion as the abolition of religion as such. The state which presupposes religion is not yet a true real state. Quote, of course, the religious notion affords security to the state, but to what state? To what kind of state? At this point, the one-sided formulation of the Jewish question begin, becomes evident. It was by no means sufficient to investigate who is to be emancipated. Eh. Who is to emancipate? Who is to be emancipated? Criticism had to be invest had to investigate a third point. It had to inquire what kind of emancipation is in question. What conditions follow from the very nature of the emancipation that is demanded? Only the criticism of political emancipation itself would have been the conclusive criticism of the Jewish question and its real emerging in the general question of time. Because Bauer does not raise the question to this level, he becomes entangled in contradictions. He puts forward conditions which are not based on the, natural, on the nature of political emancipation itself. He raises questions which are not part of this problem, and he solves problems which leave this question unanswered. When Bauer says of the, opponent, the opponents of Jewish emancipation, quote, their error was only that they assumed the Christian state to be the only true one and did not subject it to the same criticism that they apply to Judaism. We find that his error lies in the fact that he subjects to criticism only the Christian state and not the state as such that he does not investigate the relation of political emancipation to human, em human emancipation and, therefore, puts forward the conditions which can be explained only by the uncritical confusion of political emancipation with general human emancipation. If Bauer asks the Jews, have you, from your standpoint, the right to want political emancipation? We ask the converse question, does the standpoint of political emancipation give the right to demand from the Jew the abolition of Judaism and from man the abolition of religion? The Jewish question acquires a different form depending on the state in which the Jew lives. In Germany, where there is no political state, no state as such, the Jewish question is a purely theological one. The Jew finds himself in religious opposition to the state, which recognizes theology, a double-edged criticism. A criticism of Christian theology and of huh? Jewish theology. Hence, we continue to operate in the sphere of theology, however much we may operate critically within it. So, thoughts on that so far? Eh, well, I mean, I guess so. I agree <laughs> with Marx. Marx is definitely laying it out to kick Bauer's ass. All right. In France, 
a constitutional state, the Jewish question is a question of constitutionalism, the question of the incompleteness of political emancipation. Since the semblance of a state religion is retained here, although in a meaningless and self-contradictory formula, that of a religion of the majority, the, rash, the relation of the Jew to the state remains the semblance of a, re a religious theological opposition. Only in the North American states, at least in some of them, does the Jewish question lose its theological significance and becomes a really secular question. Only where the political state exists in its completely developed form can the relation of the Jew and of the religious man in general to the political state, and therefore the relation of religion to the state, show itself in its specific character, in its purity. The criticism of this relation ceases to be theological criticism as soon as the state ceases to adopt a theological attitude toward religion, as soon as it behaves towards religion as a state, that is, politically. Criticism, then, becomes criticism of the political state. At this point, where the question ceases to be theological, Bauer's criticism ceases to be critical. Tim. Quote, in the United States, there is neither a state religion nor a religion declared to be that of the majority, nor the predominance of one cult over another. The state stands aloof from all cults. By G. de Mont de Beaumont, I don't know how to say that, Paris, 1835, page 214, something. Continuing. Quote, Indeed, there are some North American states where the Constitution does not impose any religious belief or religious practice as a condition of political rights. Page 225. Continuing, nevertheless, in the United States, people do not believe that a man without religion could be an honest man. Page 224. End quote. Nevertheless, North America is predominantly the country of religiosity, as Beaumont, Tocqueville, and Englishman Hamilton unanimously assure us. The North American states, however, serve us only as an example. The question is, what is the relation of a complete political emancipation to religion? If we find that even in the country of complete political emancipation, religion not only exists but displays a fresh and vigorous vitality that is proof that the existence of religion is not in contradiction to the perfection of the state. Since, however, the existence of religion is the existence of defect, the source of this defect can only be sought in the nature of the state itself. We no longer regard religion as the cause, but only as the manifestation of secular narrowness. Therefore, we explain the religious limitations of the free citizen by their secular limitations. We do not assert that they must overcome their religious narrowness in order to get rid of their secular restrictions. We assert that they will overcome their religious narrowness only their religious narrowness, eh, narrowness once they get rid of their secular restrictions. We do not turn secular questions into theological ones. History has long enough been merged into super, in superstition. We now merge superstition in history. The question of the relation of political emancipation to religion becomes for us the question of the relation of political emancipation to human emancipation. We criticize the religious weakness of the political state by criticizing the political state in its secular form, apart from its weakness as regards religion. The contradiction between the state and a particular religion, for instance Judaism, is given by, by us a human form as the contradiction between the state and particular secular elements. The contradiction between the state and religion in general as the contradiction between the state and its presuppositions in general. So, thoughts on that paragraph? I see where he's going with this, but... I mean, I don't, I, I don't disagree, <laughs> of course. I mean, the contradiction between the state and a particular religion, for instance, Judaism, is given by us a human form as the contradiction between the state and particular secular elements. So, you know, supposing that there's a contradiction between Judaism as a religion, as a way of life or something, and, you know, the secular state. So the, the contradiction can't be a theological or religious one because the state isn't religious. Yeah. So... If it's not based on a religious one, 
and uh, assuming the contradiction comes from the state rather than, uh, you know, the inverse, <laughs> uh, then the contradiction must be a one of particular secular elements. Yeah, so it can't be founded on religious principles or morality or whatever, necessarily. So the contradiction between the state and religion in general as the contradiction between the state and its presuppositions in general. I'm not quite sure what like the first part of that one plays out as. You know, it's like mm -hmm. uh, the contradiction between the state and particular secular elements that is a particular religion. Condition, contradiction between the state and a particular religion is the contradiction between the state and a particular secular element. Um, that doesn't uh, quite make sense to me. It seems to be phrased strangely. Um, uh, the second part makes sense, in which, you know, the contradiction between the state and religion in general is the contradiction between the state and its presuppositions in, in general. That is, the yeah. presuppositions of secularity, of this, the secular life and existence of the state, uh, you know, is in contradiction to a general way, religious way of life, you know, such as uh, if you need to bow down, you know, 12 times a day to like towards facing towards Mecca or whatever, six times a day, uh, you know, five minutes at a time. Uh, and your job doesn't allow that, or that's kind of an issue of, you know, secular life against your way of life, you know, your peculiar religious necessities. Yeah, like the example he used before was if you need, if you had a court hearing on Saturday, but you're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath or whatever. But uh, the former por portion when it said the contradiction between the state and particular religion as the contradiction between the state and particular secular elements uh, seems weird. That doesn't seem to analogize well. You know, why would the contradiction between the state and the particular religion, for instance, Judaism, well, be a contradiction between the state and particular secular elements? I think he's saying it's an equivalency, right? Because uh, if you have contradictions between like your secular lifestyle and the state, it's they're they're saying like uh, religion doesn't matter, right? Or no? Am I right? Am I wrong? No, it doesn't seem like it. he's analogizing the contradiction between the state and a particular religion. For instance, Judaism is given by us a human form as the contradiction between the state and particular secular elements. But if the issue is a contradiction between the state and a particular religion, how does it make sense to analogize it as a contradiction between the state and particular secular elements? If the problem is the contradiction against particular religion, Judaism, yeah, it's just you know that the secular the secular form. Well, yeah, it's saying that the, this is just a human way of life or whatever. It's not like oh, this is just your religion or whatever. This is like part of what you are or something. I don't know. I, I'm thinking I about guess it. So. I, it doesn't make sense to me. It's, yeah. I'm sure it makes sense somehow. It's just I, it's not making sense to me in the way he phrases it. Does anyone else have an interpretation? Because I, I don't know how to phrase what I think about it, but I think I understand. I mean, I see where you're coming from. It's given human form, so it's given life, basically, by saying that the contradiction between the state and a religion is like it's not because it's a religion. It would be the same as if uh, you had a contradiction between what the state does and something that wasn't religious. Like if you thought it was your <laughs> do uh, your your right to own slaves or whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean that's one that analogizes, but it's not the same yeah. thing. Like it's not the same thing to say there's a contradiction here between the state and a particular religion for Judaism, for example, and a contradiction mm -hmm. between the state and its own secular elements, which is you know the state says, you know, all men are created equal, you know, all men have the same. Or the same under the law, and the reality is that that's not true. And then having that be yep. a contradiction is not the same as having just a religious, uh, you know, a a contradiction of you know Jews having an issue with the secularity of the state, for example. 
you know, or the secularity of life in general, in which, you know, they can't do, live out, you know, a Jewish way of life, yeah, you know, without the constraint. Mm -hmm. That just seems like a weird, weird way of phrasing it. Well, I think he elaborates more in the next episode. All right. The political emancipation of the Jew, the Christian, and in general of religious man, is the emancipation of the state from Judaism, from Christianity, from religion in general. In its own form and the manner characteristic of its nature, the state as a state emancipates itself from religion by emancipating itself from the state religion. That is to say, by the state as a state not professing any religion, but on the contrary asserting itself as a state. The political emancipation from religion is not a religious emancipation that has been carried out through to completion and is free from contradiction because political emancipation is not a form of human emancipation which has been carried through to completion and is free from contradiction so a uh, perfect critique right there i think makes absolute perfect sense you know the way to emancipate any religion is to just emancipate the state from being tied to any other religion <laughs> just make it non-religious secular there you go no privileges for anybody you're all screwed <laughs> you're all equally screwed but hey, you know, you're not, you're not like oppressed legally uh, because of your religion. You're oppressed because you're poor. <laughs> yeah, but then we can address that position with that problem as a state. It would be easier. Because if you're religious and you say, oh, well, I'm free, they can just say, well, didn't Jesus say to to, <laughs> to, to give your shirt or whatever, you know. A lot of people live in poverty. Uh, at this point, like on purpose, I guess. Humbled themselves or whatever, right? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a thing. I mean, I've encountered people like that that want to be poor because they don't want to have riches here. They want riches in heaven or whatever. But going on. Oh, yeah. There are certainly some people like that. Uh, they're bullshitting if they say they want to be poor. They are poor, <laughs> and they're just they're just fucking rationalizing a way to feel better. Come on. Nobody, nobody in this life like just wants to be yeah, they're actually crazy poor. crazy people who give up their wealth. Oh, no, look, sure look, giving up wealth. Want to no, be rich. no, giving up wealth I mean, is not the same thing as wanting to be poor. Like, I mean, oh, okay, poverty, yeah, yeah. like, in the, in the real mean. sense well, of, like. Yeah, like, there, there's a difference between living frugally versus being poor. Yeah, I'm not talking about abject poverty. I may be talking about, like, anyone travelers or something. would want to <laughs> do that, of course. Yeah. No one should want to live in abject poverty. So just reading the like last half of that paragraph, the political emancipation from religion is not a religious emancipation that has been carried through to completion and is free from contradiction. Because political emancipation is not a form of human emancipation, which has been carried through to completion and is free from contradiction. So emancipating religion from, I mean, politics from religion, you know, making a secular state secular, does not fully free uh, religion either. It's not a, religion does not get a full emancipation itself in that uh, seemingly mutual emancipation, partly because, well, uh, both of them are not aimed at a fully human emancipation that has been carried through to completion and is free from contradiction and blah, blah, blah. Although, I don't know, uh, there could be ways in which could one could say that's kind of a dual project that goes on in both, which ideally meets eventually. In which, you know... Uh, yeah, it could happen. You know, it seems like a thing like a, like Hegel would say, for example. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying like I think that, that Hegel says this, but it seems Hegel's kind of uh, hints at something like that in which you know when he says stuff like you know uh, philosophy is just like you know uh, 
another flip side of the truth of religion, you know, which like religious, uh, particularly by this, he means you know, like Christian religion, you know, the universality, you know, universalism, universal uh, redemption, universal forgiveness, uh, universal love. You know, it's, it's kind of like a dual project with uh, the whole political uh, establishment's uh, drive, or at least the rational drive to have a political establishment that is of universal right, you know, equality, at least uh, within the confines of the law, the drive to bring forth a way of life which allows and affords the conditions of freedom to flourish in which everything else flourishes equally. So um, I think there are ways to disagree with Marx here in saying that, uh, no, the political emancipation and religious emancipation could both very well be human forms of emancipation, which mm. indeed sure. haven't been But he's saying one doesn't presuppose the other. Like, they're not intrinsically tied, I think is what he's saying. They could be, but they're not. I don't know. Um, I actually think they are. Okay. Because, like, okay, like, speaking religion in a very broad sense, like, if you don't have mm. a state in which people really believe in an absolute as a form of a freedom and ethical way of life, uh, y you don't get human emancipation. Y you're not going to get it. You know? So what you're saying is it's never going to happen. <laughs> I mean, people really have to believe in good. People really yeah. have to believe. Otherwise, you know, we get uh, modern, you know, uh, skepticism in which, you know, people don't really believe in things and therefore they're not really willing to do anything. Sure. Yeah, I agree. If you don't have anything to live for, you don't have... I mean, if you don't have anything to die for, you don't have anything to live for. Yeah, but you're, you're thinking about it in one way. What about the converse? I mean, dude, that's if, the way like, that like, okay, the religion like, helps the state. How does the state help, you know? Oh, and it religion. provides uh, the possibilities for multiple religions. So insofar as they don't oh, okay. contradict the state. I mean, you can be a like you have freedom yeah. of religion. Like you can be a Muslim, you can be a Jew, you can be a Christian, Catholic, Hare Krishna, whatever Hindu doesn't matter. So long as you know you, you do your citizen, your duty as a citizen, and like mm -hmm. you know, don't commit any weird cult like cult crimes or anything, rituals and shit. Yeah, uh, it, we let you be, and you know nobody cares. Everybody's like, ah, but you know, that's fine. Not... It's your private way of life. Yeah, but that's fr like what you privately believe. But yeah. that's not freedom of the religion. Like the religion itself is limited to the confines of the state, because if you believe something that is against the law, you can't do it without being subject to the law. Well, yeah, because the state trumps the state ultimately trumps everything. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, the, yeah. the, ra the rational side trumps everything. But the thing is, they kind of self mutually constitute <laughs> each other. You got to uh, have a sort yeah. of religious venerance for the ideals of the state. In order for it to work, if the state sure, is towards but you're thinking freedom. about religion in the broad sense, though. Oh, yeah, he, broad sense. He's talking about it in specific, like Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, etc. Of course, what we would refer to as also a religion would be necessary as well. Well, there's also mysticism. Mysticism is pretty yeah. broadly universal, in which it's kind of like you go your own way, buddy. You get enlightened <laughs> one day. Well, that what about too. communism? Communism is a sort of like religious ideal. It's definitely well. religious. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's fucking oh, religious yeah. as hell. I mean, like it, you got to grow up in a culture which is like this is the thing. Like that's what I mean. Like when you you take this in like in a very broad sense, and I think like in the real sense of which like fundamental religion really is like, not like you know this just like a brain dead religion that we have we all are acquainted with. Uh, you have this mutual constitution which you can't have politics without a religion. It won't work because if people don't believe in the ideals of the state and the state doesn't mutually reinforce the ideals of uh, the secular religion, so to say. Uh, it, yeah, they can't do it by force. It, it, it has just to be an agreement. Uh, yeah, it just won't. You won't have a, a fully functioning like human emancipation, basically. Yeah. Okay, so you elaborated what you meant and I agree. So I, I was just. And I don't think Marx it. would disagree either, really, with that. I think he would. You think he would? 
Maybe. I don't know. You know, alienation just, and whatnot. He's like, why would you have to believe in such a thing? Well, he's yeah. Like, it's just alienation. Maybe he would think you, that you don't want need anything to believe in, but the reality is we do. So continuing. I want the guarantee that I can go outside and not get murdered or something, you know. Yeah, I like that people believe in the spook of the law, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Continuing, the limits of political emancipation are evident at once from the fact that the state can free itself from a restriction without human, without man being really free from this restriction, that the state can be a free state. Pun on word Freistat, which is, also means republic. Without man being a free man, Bauer himself tacitly admits this when he slays down the following condition for political emancipation. Quote, every religious privilege and therefore also the monopoly of a privileged church would have been abolished altogether and if some or many persons or even the overwhelming majority still believe themselves bound to fulfill religious duties, this fulfillment ought to be left to them as a purely a private matter. End quote. So I can agree, you know, uh, but this is like a really uh, taking a, a common uh, conception of freedom. Uh, you know, for example, in a Hegelian conception of freedom, the free state is not free just because it's freed itself from religion. Uh, for example, Hegel would not say that our current states are very much free because most of them are not free from the economy, which he thinks it should be free from the economy as well. Yeah. And then freedom is like, you know, in a Hegelian sense, uh, Defined as uh, self-determination, which uh, basically means it's dialectical, yo. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, go read my blog on it. Well, yeah, uh, okay. I was just going to say, like, people aren't going to know what you're talking about when you just say I'm not going to take, well, yeah, they can go read my blog on it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. If you want to know, read my blog on it. It's it's long. I'm not going to explain it here. Yeah, it's very um, long. Continuing, it is possible, therefore, for this state to have emancipated itself from religion, even if the overwhelming majority is still religious. And the overwhelming, the overwhelming majority does not cease to be religious through being religious in private. But the attitude of the state and of the republic free state in particular to religion is after all only the attitude to religion of the men who compose the state it follows from this that man frees himself through the medium of the state that he frees himself politically from a limitation when in contradiction with himself he raises himself above this limitation in an abstract limited and partial way it follows further that by freeing himself politically man frees himself in a roundabout way through an intermediary although an essential intermediary. It follows finally that man, even if he proclaims himself an atheist through the medium of the state, that is, if he proclaims the state to be atheist, still remains in the grip of religion precisely because he acknowledges himself only by a roundabout route, uh, route only through an intermediary. I don't know. How do you say that? Route? Route? I've heard it say like both. Uh, both are correct. It yeah. depends on your regional dialect. I like route. Well, okay, root. I say root. root. They're both. They're both tricky of in you English say, because say root. you're 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 living in Canada. <laughs> yes. A boot. Root. Root. About. A boot. None A boot. of them sound like particularly awful to me. Route or root? Neither. I think. They oh, neither. Both sound okay. fine. All right. All right. Yeah. Tangents. Yeah. <laughs> Religion is precisely the recognition of man in a roundabout way through an intermediary. The state is the intermediary between man and man's freedom, just as Christ is the intermediary to whom man transfers the burden of all his divinity, all his religious constraint, so the state is the intermediary to whom man transfers all his non-divinity and all his human unconstraint. So, you know, uh, 
religion had transferring uh, all the divinity of man into that alienation the state is the alienation of a, a non-divine human unconstrained human freedom as i do say uh, you know uh, I think he's pretty spot on here in that, you know, uh, the state is kind of like a roundabout way for, you know, humans to express, uh, you know, their secular humanity as just secular humanity, just you know, purely conventional by whatever law it is. In which, you know, amazingly, even it's like to a lot of religious places, there are still things which, though, are abhorred by the religion, are nonetheless allowed legally. And, like, the, the judges are like, Technically, it's allowed by the law, so, you know, nothing I can do about it, so go ahead and do it. But, you know, they wag their fingers at you. It's kind of like pornography and all that kind of thing. Just, you know, the early cases on that must have been, like, uh, quite interesting, you know. The, just kind of a by-the-laws thing. It's also, it's also, you know, part of the weird inhumanity of humanity in which, you know, like, we had laws which were obviously wrong morally and yet partially because you know one sticks oneself in that system and has to abide by that system uh, one rules in the name of that system <laughs> you know something like a uh, brown versus board of education that kind of stuff in which uh, you know the the full force of the law is just kind of like uh, not really there and you know all that can all that was given in that was sort of a spiritual nod towards the things that we should do but uh, never did interesting take uh, can you continue reading hyperion yeah So we were on the political uh, okay. elevation of yeah. man. Political elevation of man above religion shares. Sorry, did I read that? Above religion shares all the defects and all the advantages of political elevation in general. The state as a state annuls, for instance, private property. Man declares by political means that private property is abolished as soon as the property qualification for the right to elect or be elected is abolished, as has occurred in many states of North America. Hamilton. Alexander, no, Thomas Anderson, uh, quite correctly interprets his this fact from a political point of view as meaning the masses, quote, the masses have won a victory over the property owners and financial wealth, end quote, uh, from Thomas Han Hamilton's uh, Men and Manners in America, written in 1833 in Edinburgh. That seems strange. I gotta find out the context of that. <laughs> yeah. Marks again, is not private property abolished an idea if the non-property owner has become the legislator of the property for the property owned? The property qualification for the suffrage is the last political form of giving recognition to private property. Uh, nevertheless, the political annulment of private property not only fails to abolish private property, but even presupposes it. The state abolishes, in its, in, in its own way, uh, distinctions of birth, social rank, education, occupation, when it declares that birth, social rank, education, occupation are non-political distinctions, when it proclaims without regard to these distinctions that every member of the nation is an equal participant in national sovereignty, when it treats all elements of the real life of the nation from the standpoint of the state. Nevertheless, the state allows private property education, occupation, to act in their way, that is, as private property, as education, as occupation, and to exert the influence of their special nature. Far from abolishing these real distinctions, the state only exists on the presupposition of their existence. It feels itself to be a political state and asserts its universality only in opposition to these elements of its being. Hegel, therefore, defines the relation of the political state to religion quite correctly when he says, quote, In order that the state should come into existence as the self-knowing, moral reality of the mind, its distraction from the form of authority and faith is essential. 
but this distinction emerges only insofar as the ecclesiastical aspect arrives at a separation within itself. It is only in this way that the state, above the particular churches, has achieved and brought into existence universality of thought, which is the principle of its form. From Hegel's Philosophy of Right, 1st edition, page 346. Of course, uh, says Marx, only in this way, above the particular elements, does the state constitute itself as universality. Did you want to talk about that a little? Or no? Uh, not much to say. I mean, I mean Marx says it ironically, yeah. but I actually agree wholeheartedly with Hegel. <laughs> 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 yeah. What else do you think universality would mean here? Like, of course, it has to go above everything else. You know, put itself above everything else. Wait, you think he's being sarcastic here? Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe I didn't pick up on that. I guess the the exclamation point gave it away. I thought he may have been saying no duh. <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> well no, I mean he, he's kinda of doing it in both ways, but I think it's the crucial sort of casting yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. It's kinda of no duh and like look at how stupid this is. <laughs> you know, this is the stupidity of our reality. I like, like I'm the, not gonna like, you know, defend this here, but I think there's quite a way into like make sen in making sense of this in such a way that it's not stupid and actually I don't know. I can't conceive it any other way afterwards. Yeah. All right, going on. The perfect political state is, by its nature, man's species life, as opposed to his material life. All the preconditions of this ego egoistic life continue to exist in civil society, outside the sphere of the state, but as qualities of civil society. Where the political state has attained its true development... Man, not only in thought, in consciousness, but in reality, in life, leads a twofold life, a heavenly and an earthly life. Life in the political community, in which he considers himself a communal being, and life in the civil society, in which he acts as a private individual, regards other, mean, uh, other men as a means, uh, degrades himself into a means, and becomes the plaything of alien powers. The relation of the political state to civil society is just as spiritual as the relations of heaven to earth. The political state stands in the same opposition to civil society, and it prevails over the latter in the same way as religion prevails over the narrowness of the secular world, that is, by likewise having always to acknowledge it, to restore it, and allow itself to be dominated by it. In his most immediate reality, in civil society, man is a secular being. Here, where he regards himself as a real individual and is so regarded by others, he is a fictitious phenomenon. In the state, on the other hand, where the man, where man is regarded as a species being, he is the imaginary member of an illusory sovereignty, is deprived of his real individual life and endowed with a real, an unreal universality. All right, I think we should read that far slower. A okay. Really meaty paragraph. Well, I was just going to say, uh, he's doing this because in Philosophy of Right, Hegel makes the distinction between uh, the state and civil society. He's saying that people often confuse the state with civil society or like combine them in, into one entity, but they shouldn't be seen that way. Uh, he says that in the remark on section 258 of uh, uh, the third part about the ethical life. Yeah. But so, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, so Marx is taking Hegel's distinction between the civil society and the state as as genuine, uh, which is good because I agree with that too, and uh, saying that you know where you act as a uh, as a member of the state is different than how you act in your real life. What you do in your like civil society among your peers or whatever you know the people you choose to interact with that's up to you but how you act uh in pri uh, in public or what you know like w with the uh state like as a as viewing your actions or whatever is different yeah yeah, yeah. the thing is uh, Mar uh, so, Mar sorry, Mar is being it, yeah, so. 
Uh, Kant also makes this distinction, I believe, in his What is Enlightenment with the uh, public and private use of reason. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they're like, that's Marcier, a little different. Marcier, but yeah. like at the end, though, he says, like, this is a sort of illusory thing in which, you know, he's kind of downplaying the reality. Is he's saying, saying, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. You know, the fact that it's already distinct, you know, it just shows how, how much of a, a lie it is. Uh, although <laughs> that's that's the opposite. I mean, like, let's go through this again. Uh, like, the perfect political right. state is by its nature man's species life as opposed to his material life. Actually, yeah. Uh, who says this? Like, Aristotle. Aristotle says, you know, man is. You know, a political being. That's that's really the, mm -hmm. the essence of man. And by and by that is meant a whole lot of shit, far more yeah. than just doing you know, acknowledge, politics. Yeah, you acknowledge that you're uh, engaged in politics. Yeah, I mean, it's actually one of the first things. Yeah. Man is a social being. A political being is a whole ensemble of a self-directed society. Yeah, people that say they're not political, they are, but they don't realize. <laughs> Because they still care about certain political things, they just don't want to talk about it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, he says all the preconditions of these, this egoistic life continue to exist in civil society outside the sphere of the state, but as qualities of civil society, where the the political state has attained its true development, man not only in thought and consciousness but in reality and life leads a twofold life: a heavenly and an earthly life. Life in the political community, in which he considers himself a communal being, and life in civil society, in which he acts as a private individual, regards others as men's as means, degrades himself into a means, and becomes the plaything of alien powers. And this, uh, you know, uh, shunning of duality, by the way, I mean, it's a, it's a mystical thing. I'm gonna say, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, mm -hmm. Mars is not spooked. I'm sorry, Mars is highly spooked. <laughs> this whole, this, <laughs> like, this whole thing is like, and you go, this is like, you know, not too far from the, his writing of like the 1844 manuscripts. He's super spooked. The most spooked he ever was in his entire life in the 1844 manuscripts. This oh, monistic yeah. tendency that he has <laughs> is just like super spooks to the extreme. I mean, look, look at your life. And like, if you think that you, you don't live a dual life, you must be some kind of insane person because you cannot act everywhere and anywhere the same. There are nuances to the context and the people you deal with. You don't act with your family the same way you act with strangers. <laughs> you know, no matter how much of a communal society you have, your family has a special relation to you in which you have certain duties, certain emotional connections, certain other things in which like, you just don't have for strangers. You know, you don't have a, you know, there's no guilt for like, you know, a stranger, you giving your lung to a stranger. But if you're like, your mom is dying and needs a lung and you can give it to her and you don't give it, people are going to look at you funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same way. And this whole thing of like, oh, you know, you know, you're supposed to have this uh, universal outlook in, in, the, in the state. But, you know, here you have a really selfish outlook, you know, in economics. Well, yeah, you know, you have, pro you have those modalities as a human being. You have selfish individual pursuits. That's not bad. I mean, that's not bad at all. I mean, it's kind of it's part of being a private person. You know, it, you have these deep dark secrets that nobody else but you will ever know. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's kind of normal. It's expected. You know, you yeah. have differences from other people, and you, you just you aren't universal in that way. So that's fine. And that you go in the state, and then you finally suddenly go. It's like okay, yeah, you know. I like this and that, you know, and I wish the world was like that, but now I'm going to think in a universal sense and go like, what is, you know, what, what is makes most rational for like everyone, you know, I'd love for this to be a Christian country and, you know, everybody loves and sings to Jesus, but I realize, you know, that's just not going to fly. <laughs> so you will just, you know, go with a secular option, that kind of thing. It's, it's not nonsensical. We do it all the fucking time. It's the norm nowadays. Uh, many people here will go and say, but see, you know, it doesn't work, you know, especially particularly points to the U.S. And well, the thing is, what Marx said earlier about uh, how the state, you know, is kind of aloof of the private sphere, that's kind of the problem in the U.S. Like, that really is. Like, the state is really aloof mm -hmm. of the private sphere unless this private sphere dominate everything. Uh, whereas, uh, like, in the Hegelian state, the, the conception is uh, the state is going to be very hands-on. 
And by the way, it's the same thing in Marxism, the idea of communism. You don't think the community is not going to be hands-on in what you're going to be learning and how you're going to learn it, what your ethics are going to be, you know, what the moral backbone, you know, which in which everybody, you know, meets as equals and citizens, you know, quote-unquote citizens, even though the state technically doesn't exist. Uh, of course, <laughs> it's going to be the same way. You know, there's got to be a really heavy hand of aiming society towards some point. Yeah. Just happens to be that our current society is aimed towards capital. But if we had, you know, a society that gave a fuck, or a state that gave a fuck, a at least, genuine state, yeah, uh, it would be the, for leading it elsewhere. Yeah, it would be concerned with the ethical whole. Because it would be the, uh, the, what's it called? Power of reason actualizing itself as the will of the people. Or whatever. So, you know, to, to have this fracture of, like, you know, you can be selfish over here in civil society. You can make your own personal pursuits, however it is that you will, so long as you don't violate rights. And, you know, and here you can, like, uh, live your own private life with your family if you want, or with community, however the heck you please. doesn't matter. You can get married, you cannot. Uh, and when you get to the law, you're all equal citizens. And when you get to the state, you're expected. I mean, even here in the U.S., I mean, it's like you're expected to rule in the interest of all. Like even the most ardent of like, you know, Republicans, you know, won't go and uh, and outright always <laughs> say that they are yeah. ruling for just one specific side. They're like, they're like, we're ruling in favor of the bourgeoisie. You know, there's, they always play it up as a, yeah. a universal thing. Why? Because we expect them to, and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. That they don't they do it as a whole Fox other thing. News and say, well, uh, well, Bill Gates paid I'm me $400 company. million. Dollars. <laughs> yeah. I'm running my company. I, I'm making uh, 4,000 times the average employee, and I get a lot of money, and I don't do as much work as they do. Like, I don't want to lose they would, it. They would know? never say that. <laughs> yeah, they don't say, like, you know, I'm against this because I'm going to lose a ton of money. It's like, what do you mean, yeah. you know, the workers get a living wage? I don't care. Yeah. No, they're oh, they're going to make up some of the guy. thing. He, oh, he actually you. did fuck it, him, yeah. remember? Yeah, he actually did it. He was like, I'm not raising my pizza by 14 cents they don't need health care <laughs> yeah and he's losing business yeah he's complaining now poor multi-millionaire multi-millionaires should that guy like that's i think it, like well, that's a national like no i mean like it's a national chain yeah. like how is he not like a hundreds of millions of i don't know movies? well multi-millionaire yeah multi Multi would be like, you know, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know how rich he is. Multiple, maybe maybe, I don't know. I maybe just I'm just like, uh, you know, assuming how profitable like Papa John's is. Yeah. I mean, they have to spend money on things. So he yeah, probably it's doesn't. A, it's a decent pizza. I, I mean, I like it. Yeah. It's better yeah, than fucking it's fine, I guess. Or Little Never Caesars. That, God, but... I, I, I oh, God. Caesars. Yeah, Little Caesars is awful. <laughs> they should change their name because I like Caesars. So, regards other man's anyway. means. Uh, so, continuing, the relation of the political state to civil society is just as spiritual as the relations of heaven to earth. It's no more spiritual than the relationship of, uh, you know, do I take a wink today on Tuesday or do I not? You know, will my girlfriend get mad at me? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's rational self control. Come on, man. You're your own person. She shouldn't get mad. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh. Um, okay, like that's that's really yeah, how that's really the analogy, the proper analogy. The state mm -hmm. is to civil society or to the economy, as your mind, your rational self is to your feeling self. You may feel horny, but you're at work. Guess what? You better not go and just start wanking out in the open. <laughs> you may <laughs> feel like it. Is. Yeah, if you're diogenes, like, but you know, then go you're gonna. It. You're gonna get rolled down the street on your barrel, yeah, and you know, we taken to jail. Meet the emperor. <laughs> so I mean, like, he tries to make it. It's like, oh, you know, this is such a religious uh, an analogy of religious alienation. I'm sorry, it's not. It's normal. And if you don't do that, I don't. I probably don't want to be friends with you. Like, people without inhibitions are, are you know, I don't know. They're weird. I've I know some who are kind of like that and. And not very fun to really be around for too long. You know, people who just Without like speak their minds, yeah, like inhibitions. You know, okay. They don't control themselves. Yeah. Yeah. People who like, oh, I just always speak my mind. I. They're they're just either like stupid. Our president. <laughs> you know, they're, like stu they, they're stupid. They're stupid. Because he 
doesn't because those types of people don't think through what they exactly they, they don't like think rational. through they don't have that rational self control they're just like fucking capitalism they don't think like <laughs> like the reason capitalism has crises people is partly it's it's in the system but second is capitalists don't fucking think they just go oh i can make profit here they don't think about who they're fucking they don't think about like 100 years mm-hmm. from now like they're fucking like their own the workers that are fucking all everybody. It's gonna be screwed forever, but I'll make a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, now. hey, I can. <laughs> I, I want profits. Profits are right here. There you go. It doesn't yeah. matter. You know, there's no, there's no inhibition, and the, the whole point of the state, it's supposed to be the factor of inhibition. Just like how your rational mind is supposed to be inhibit you from, you know, just following every single whim and instinct that you have. Yeah, they're like me when I drink alcohol. I lose a psychological block. <laughs> And people think it's funny, but, you know, they wouldn't want me to be like that all the time. I can't imagine. So, you know, acting like a universal individual in the state and acting like a private individual in the market, it's not a contradiction. It, it, you're already doing it in yourself. All that you people hate is it seems external because it's in the state and it's like, oh, the state is, you know, the big brother. And, you know, and those bureaucrats, well, <laughs> it's... Some people are stupid. Some states are stupid. What are you going to do? But it's it's nothing spooky. It's not just like this bad, awful alienation. It's it's a necessary thing. Come on. Uh, it's going to happen in communism too, by the way. Like I don't know what people, what Mars was thinking here, but, you know, it's just him going on his usual tirades. The political state stands in the same opposition to civil society, and it prevails over, prevails over the latter in the same way as religion prevails over the narrowness of the secular world. That is, by likewise having always to acknowledge it, to restore it, and allow itself to be not dominated by it. Uh, same thing. It's like, you know, uh, people who just don't have willpower, they're like, I'm sorry, you know, it's like, I'm just horny. I couldn't help it. You know, I just had to rape that woman. I had to fuck that dog. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> okay. Wow. We all know. Prick- I'm, I'm no. loving your analogies today. They're great. Well, prickly yeah. cactus. <laughs> By the way, everybody who knows prickly oh, cactus God. knows what we're talking about. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I wanted exactly. it. The dog didn't. The dog didn't say no. So hey, why not? Uh, no, no inhibition. No rational inhibitions. Emphasis on prick. <laughs> That kid doesn't even, like, accept that he is himself, and... Prickly Cactus, like, literally just uh, <laughs> has a broken mind. Come on, let's just... Let's yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. But, yeah, we should just dismiss him and not even interact with point, him. Point point is, the fact often. that there are people who can't control themselves and the fact that there are states that they can't control themselves and that is not a an argument against self-control. I mean, it just isn't. So, you know, yeah, you know, the law is right there. And the Mars says, but, you know, people still break the law. Yeah. <laughs> so what? You know, it's like, let's not try to have some sort of rational form of society. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you think is going to happen under, like, communism? Are people just going to magically accept every law? You know, it's like, oh, but it's my interest to know. Nope. It never I'm happens. Self-aware. Um, well, then there wouldn't be any individuality, of course. Well, yeah, like it's an assumption that someone uh, you can collapse the universal individual, as if there won't be contradiction. Of course, there's going to be contradiction. Yeah, doesn't mean it's Plato like made the a same deadly contradiction. Sort of like observation in which he took the audacious a- avenue of thought, where you whether or not people uh, or whether or not there are laws, people good people would do good things and bad people would do bad things but you can't operate that way you need some sort of uh incentive against doing bad things or whatever you know so you know the state is always powerless against the economy no it's not <laughs> uh, just like how you're not always powerless against your feelings you may be afraid but you can be a hero <laughs> what I, I, <laughs> you know you can is that a uh, quote from something I don't know. I don't Caught know. Me off it's, it sounds like a common thing. <laughs> yeah. Probably is a really common phrase. Caught me off guard. I've never heard it before. But yeah, you know, it's like you can ra- ra- you can rationally overcome yourself. The state can also rationally overcome, you know, the civil society. Uh, 
If you don't think so, look at fucking Russia. Oh yeah, the Soviet Union did oh, it. Yeah. Putin. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, not not modern Russia, but I the know, Soviet Union I did know. it. If you can, you can overcome yeah, production, and you could overcome it very, very oppressively. But it can be done. Just like you know, it's like uh, you really want to like. It's like, like imagine you know, like when you fall in love, like when you're like, your first time falling like deeply in love, and like you know, it's like not the right person. You know they're not for you, and you you will yourself through it, man. You really don't yeah, like it, like, yeah. but it hurts. But you you're gonna live. I'll fuck her a few more times and then be sad. I mean, you can overcome you, you can overcome emotions. You can also overcome like, the resistance of the the, econo the economy. Or there's also like you know dealing with the existential dread of everyday life and continuing on every day. And then people are gonna copy. It's gonna come. It's like you're, you know, you're being an idealist. You know, you think ideas drive reality. Oh no, buddy! It's like a bayonet up your ass is uh, definitely gonna make you comply. <laughs> you will come. What is it? A holiday in Cambodia? You know, with a <laughs> bowl of rice yeah. and a gun to your head. Yeah, dead Kennedys. So. Uh, you'll definitely work. You'll do what the state says. You will follow the plan. Because by the way, I mean, like, you can't have a planned society in which, uh, in a planned economy in which you can just let people slide by and not do what they were supposed to. And like, they're like, well, we just didn't feel like, you know, working on Tuesday. So, you know, what you ordered that was supposed to be there on Wednesday, it's going to get there on Thursday, but you need it on Wednesday. And uh, the plan, the promise, the assumption was it was promised on Wednesday. You know, that uh, you're going to have some measure in which you got to be able to enforce commitments. Because if you don't, you know, do you have you have a really shitty state of things in which you know you can't trust other people to get shit done. Yeah, but yeah, but then maybe we have the other Dead Kennedy song, uh, "California Uber Alles." <laughs> uh, <laughs> the state is yeah, oppressor yeah. in that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We still have Has Governor to be a Jerry Brown. Yeah. Oh God. He never became we president. We got worse. Yeah. Well, we got someone like the fool. The the yeah. jester became the king, so. Yeah, except the you know the jester was like, literally stupid and not smart. Yeah. Well, yeah. See, jest the jester jesters are always assumed, you know, by a concept. You know, it could be like you know this smarmy like smart guy who says like the truth in a Man. funny way. Uh, the clown is just like you know kind of a sad idiot. Yeah, he's the fool. Yeah, so uh, imagine, imagine uh, Donald Trump. All, all he needs is a red <laughs> nose. He already has the face paint oh, and boy. the hair <laughs> and the wig. Jesus. And before demonetized and like removed by YouTube. Yeah. yeah. His appearance means nothing to me. I don't care what he looks like. He looks stupid, but whatever. I care about like uh, what he does point is okay that's a tangent returning back to this uh, <laughs> yeah uh, you know obviously here you know in his mate he continued in his most immediate reality in civil society man is a secular being uh, as opposed to the state where he is a religious being uh, and uh, here the analogy starts breaking down uh, because the alienation is not the same because it doesn't actually function the way Marx thinks uh, it just doesn't work you know, uh, this whole idea, well, you know, the material conditions always prevail. Well, guess how material conditions are fucking changed? Uh, they're first changed by my ideas that become material forces. You know, one way that ideas become material forces is the fucking state. <laughs> the fucking state. <laughs> the fucking state. Ain't no bourgeoisie coming up here into my capital. <laughs> Not with six six you know, shooter I got. <laughs> One of my hobbies in my personal life is uh, saying like things that rednecks would not say, but in a redneck accent. I should start quoting Hegel. So. But yeah. I don't think there was. You say the state is the march of God on earth? 
Why, I'll drink a pint to that. Warm bring my jug of moonshine. This hell old fella, he's a good guy. Jesus. <laughs> Praise Jesus. You sound like you're, you're sound, you sound like you're imitating uh, George W. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> in the state, on the other hand, where man is regarded as a species being, he is the imaginary member of an illusory sovereignty, is deprived of his real individual life, endowed with an unreal universality. Uh, not in, not in, not in this world. I don't know what world he lived in, but uh, yeah, Mox is full of shit. Oh, tell me, <laughs> it's true. Okay, he's full of shit in this. Like, this, I was like, oh, the state isn't real. You know, this is, uh, you know, they they talk about rights and all these things, but they don't exist. I'm sorry, they do. They don't yeah, exist as they should. Serious. Like, they don't exist as they should. Like, but Marx is full of shit here, and that the state is like, you know, beholden to, to you know, private property and the economy and like, this whole idea that the, you know, politics is just economics, on a higher plane. No, it's not. Nope. <laughs> Otherwise, regulations would not have ever fucking happened. Oh, but then, you know, it was just giving in to the material conditions. Well, I'm sorry, you're just fucking backtracking and just, like, you know, you know, redefining shit as it's uh, necessary to keep your silly conception. Yeah. The state is not an analogy of religious alienation. And as much as you want to call us all Jews, we all know who the real Jews are. <laughs> Do we? I don't know. Ooh. You know what they say, the nose knows. Oh. <laughs> I don't We're know looking at you, Muke. But... Oh, God. No, didn't we say like Muke was Pakistani? That's the joke, but he's not. He's Cyprian. I mean, he's he definitely has the nose. He definitely has the nose for, for like passing as a Jew. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually asked him what his uh, Greek name was because I just assumed he was Greek, and uh, he said that his uh, his real uh, last name or his uh his... well don't dox him. Yeah, I, no, we no know I'm, it. I'm not going to yeah. dox him, but he said like <laughs> it means it's a very common name in a Cyprus. Yeah, it is. yeah. Well, but don't reveal his, you know his long that he's uh, one of the. Uh last members of the lineage of the Nerubians. You know, those uh, half reptilian people who came from Planet X. Oh, yes. So continue it. <laughs> We're done with that paragraph. Mark's talking shit out of his ass. Some good shit, by the way. I mean, so if you're gonna like talk shit, you're gonna shit post in real life. This is how you do it. You know, at least it makes you sound smart and right. Yeah, just be confident. Say whatever bullshit you want, but just sound confident. And don't uh, don't give in. Because <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. Like I no, Marx when I when I read this, like uh, if I had read this like in my when I was still in my Marxist phase, I would have been like, holy shit, Marx is right. Yeah, but really, like. You get trapped in this myopic view of re just like it seems obvious to you that everything reduces to economics, but if you really look at the world, like no, it doesn't. Yeah, because like, that's it really what's doesn't. immediately present when you don't know like the power structures and things like that, and the interrelations. But you have to consider the whole rather than just you know what you. And this is what reactionaries do: they take one specific thing that they see, and then they assume it's a universal, or they assume that. This is all the. This is the reason they they find some false reason or whatever. Yeah. yeah, not not that this you know that capital isn't rule of state. It pretty much does, especially in the U.S. But and, it doesn't uh, have to. It's not. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not. A, it's not the function of the state. It doesn't just because it does. Just because some guy is a rapist doesn't mean we're all fucking inherently rapists, and that it's impossible to <laughs> not be a rapist. Yeah. You, you dig the analogy? I, I. Well. I mean, I get it. It's just. If by rapist you understand a capitalist, and by rape you understand a <laughs> surplus value extraction, yeah. it works. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, I understand it, I'm just saying. Uh... I'm just clarifying for the audience. Yeah, okay. I'm not advocating for rape here, you know, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, I, we know that, obviously, but... All your analogies have been sexual, <laughs> and I'm just like... 
<laughs> laughing about it, I guess. <laughs> With all the, like, Hollywood shit that's been going on. Uh, maybe that's why. Maybe that's in, like, my maybe. unconscious. Have you been hearing it in, on CNN or some shit in the uh, background? No, dude. It's like, they mentioned it, like, yeah. one day, and that was it. And, it, and yeah. I, like, out of that day, they mentioned it, like, probably, like, ten minutes. Damn. See, something, like, damning to the power structure, really. I mean, we all know Hollywood people are creeps. We, we all, all knew know Kevin Spacey <laughs> was gay. Yeah, I mean, I knew that because I, I saw him in a movie one time, you know. But there were always these allegations of him. Get, sorry, I don't want to get off of this. But he went to Thailand, basically. And, you know, the age restrictions there, it was suspect. Okay, going uh, back to... well, Well... The question really is, uh, did he sleep with a lady boy or not? Probably, is he into definitely. is he into that thing? Probably. Okay. <laughs> but uh I mean, he got a lot of things redacted, you know. All right, his continue. Awards continue. Blah, blah, blah. Forget forget Kevin Spacey. I don't even like yeah. Kevin Spacey. I mean, it's uh, interrelated to this. Hollywood shit doesn't have to be. Yeah. <laughs> the state's shit doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I think Hollywood is necessarily a shit. Like, it, it kind of... It's capitalist movies. Like, they kind of have to be shitty. They end up... That's why you should have a Ministry of Culture. Well, barely any of them promote capitalism. It's just like the order of the day, and, you know, they don't talk about class struggle as much. And if they do, it's these movies that are bad. Do you think they do that on purpose, like the one we watched? With the, uh... the recent one, with the class struggle. It had Selena Gomez in it, of all people. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, it wasn't was very good like, at all. Yeah, it wasn't good. Like the book is better, and even the book is probably yeah. It was uh, what was it? In something battle, in dubious battle, yeah, a in book battle. about commies, like real commies. Well, a fictional story about a realistic commie going out and uh, you know organizing in the California fields. Uh, back when, you know, being a commie got you killed, and, uh... See, those are the people who I've always, like... Those are the people who actually have practice. Like, none of these people who just, like, you know, like, sit around, like... We have the DSA. You don't fucking do anything. Hmm. And definitely not the armchairs. You know who I'm talking about. Us? <laughs> uh, well, I'm sitting in, like, a, a rocking chair... But it, it doesn't have arms. Oh, well. Mine does. I'm screwed. I'm sitting on my bed. You bed no socialist. Arms. You, <laughs> you're in bed with If only I had champagne, <laughs> I'd be a sound champagne. No, it's, yeah. uh, it's a coffee socialist now, I think. No, Starbucks coffee socialist is what socialist. they are. Starbucks socialist. I had Starbucks for the first time this year. All right, let's get back to this. All right. <laughs> Man has the adherent to particular. Okay, I think I cut my breath back. Uh, man has the adherent of a particular religion finds himself in conflict with his citizenship and with other men as members of the community. This conflict reduces itself to the secular division between the political state and civil society. For man as bourgeois, that is, as a member of civil society, bourgeois society in German, which I think is like Burgerliga Gesellschaft. Or something. Huh, what? The bourgeois, like civil society and and bourgeois are the same word in German, which is Burgerliga Gesellschaft stuff or something. Yeah. Uh, so so bourgeois here doesn't mean a capitalist. Bourgeois here means someone who's basically uh engages in econo in the economy, either as a worker, as you know, in the laws, whatever. Life in the state is only a semblance or a temporary exception to the essential and the rule. Of course, the bourgeois, like the Jew, remains only sophistically in the sphere of political life, just as the citoyen, citizen in French, that is, participant, participant in political life, only sophistically remains a Jew or a bourgeois. But this sophistry is not difference? personal. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> nice, Paul Jerk. 
But this sophistry is not personal. It is the sophistry of the political state itself, the difference between the merchant and the citizenship. Uh, Jews, merchant, bourgeois, citoyen, a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Soul King. All right. <laughs> the difference <laughs> between the merchant and the citizen, between the day labor laborer and the citizen, between the landowner and the citizen, between the merchant and the citizen. Wait, well, he repeated that again. Between the living individual and the citizen, the contradiction in which the religious man finds himself with the political man is the same contradiction in which the bourgeois finds himself with the citoyenne and the member of civil society with his political lion skin. Probably put the merchant and citizen just because this is about Jews. And uh, as we all know, the merchant is... Yeah, I mean, I mean it's been a meme for a long time. This secular conflict to which the Jewish question ultimately reduces itself, the relation between the political state and its preconditions, whether these are the material elements such as private property, etc., or spiritual elements such as culture and religion, the conflict between the general interest and private interest, the schism between the political state and civil society, these secular antitheses Bauer allows to persist, whereas he conducts a polemic against the religious expression. All right, so yet again, you know, uh, Marx being idealist here in a in a bad way. Yeah. What in the, which, okay, like if you think that there, it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that there won't be conflicts between general interests and private interests, I don't know what world you live in. Yeah. Because there's plenty of things which I acknowledge, which I I would like, which are uh, you know, in, in not not good things for the general public. And everybody has oh, those kind of oh, things. Yeah, I guess so. Like everybody has those kind of things. You well, know, your I'm private a Kantian here. If uh, if it's not good for everyone, then why why should I think it's good for me? I don't know because <laughs> it's, it's not different. gonna harm because it's know. not gonna harm anybody. Oh, okay. If you're talking about that, yeah, sure. I mean, I want a pug. I don't think everyone else needs a pug. You may, what exa you may think cats what suck, you're talking about. but you can't make them illegal. Yeah. What were you having in mind? Like, well, like pets. Like, actually, literally, that's okay. that's one of the things. Uh, yeah. Like you know, like order city ordinances where uh, you may want a pig, and maybe you can actually like take care of the pig. But guess what? Most people fucking won't. And like you know, that thing will be like a uh, smelly, noisy. Uh, Probably like make your yard look very ugly. It's not in the general interest of the community to let you have a pig. And so you can't. Even if you could personally, individually, like take good care of it, they're just not going to fucking let you. And you know why? Because it's a public private interest. Like, you know, like it's like having roosters. Uh, there's places where you can have roosters and there's places you can't. Why? Because they're fucking annoying. Cockadoodle don't. No, <laughs> nobody, have like, one. not, yeah, most people don't want to be, you know, Woken automatically up woken up by a, yeah by yeah. A, a dumb bird that doesn't even sound that great they do look pretty <sighs> flash though i mean not gonna lie you get a nice rooster yeah, like so. they, they look nice Wild, they're like man. cheap peacocks discount peacock well i mean i don't know you can't buy peacocks anywhere why not here, just right? get a peacock well, because yeah. it's kind of, kind of <laughs> illegal, I think. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like... But roosters, superior... like, you can get some roosters, which, like, you know, they they look pretty nice, pretty fancy. Yeah, but they're they're functionally superior to roosters because they don't crow, as far as I know. The crack I don't know. Are... I'm pretty sure a rooster would probably, <laughs> like, beat the crap out of a peacock, man. Oh, definitely. They're talons. Yeah. They're vicious, you know? They're descended from T-Rex. <laughs> It's a little, little stupid factoid, which I don't even know if it's true. Yep. It's probably like something like nine, yeah, like, like point one percent of T Rex DNA. Your science, they'll they'll figure out that they were wrong in a year or two. Probably. Point is, there are private interests which are against general interests. It's just gonna happen. I'm sorry. Like, if I had my way, let me tell you, I wouldn't allow you to go like have a parade where you like, uh, you know, can wave around dildos. Just no. <laughs> Why not? What's wrong with 
No. <laughs> well, I don't want to see it either. Well, there yeah. could be a designated dildo area. I don't care about that. Yeah, you know, you can go ahead and like have that at your party and your little, you know, like you rent out a place. Sure. And that's fine, but you don't do it down the street. I just don't see why that's allowed. Come on. Like, what's the point? Well, yeah, one. Except for to be provocative. <laughs> Yeah, like the only like who else does it like except for like gay pride parades and like they only do it it's just kind of like a fuck you to like haha you silly straight Christian white straight white males whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's like did would the city get like give an ordinance for like a porn parade? I don't think so. Why do they allow it for like gay pride parades? It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. See, We're that's too a public private for interest. most. <laughs> <laughs> socialists, I guess you would be yeah, like, but that's that? a real public private interest, yeah. you know. I don't think it's yeah, in the public interest to like have that kind of thing like in show or be normalized, frankly. Yeah, because like, I mean, it's, it it's, it's, be... it's, it's, it's too much hedonism for me, and just like it, it's not necessary. So, if you like yeah, watching uh, all those assless chaps, I'm sorry, but uh, if I ever become uh, you know, uh, general secretary, Grand chancellor. <laughs> yeah, uh, you won't be seeing them. So, yeah, general private interests. Uh, there will be conflicts. You can't say, "Oh, but you know, it's bad that there are conflicts." Nah, it it just happens. Deal with it. What do you guys think, uh, Chaya, Josh? I'm surprised Josh is quiet on this. Josh? Yeah. Oh, do you have any thoughts? Uh, not really. Alright. Neither do I. Okay. I just didn't want you guys to feel excluded I, like we were no, uh, taking I over or nothing. something. There's right. nothing insightful that I could contribute. No. I don't know, like, talking about gay pride parades wasn't, like, exactly insightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just... Our, uh, demure tendencies, I guess. Not that we have anything, any problem with people being gay or wanting to express themselves being gay or whatever, but, you know, dildo parades aren't exactly the best way to win over the populace. That's our or, or having that annoying, like stereotypical gay demeanor. I'm sorry, like <laughs> I can't stand people like that. I've met them. It's just, um, it grates. Okay, me. I do, because it's such a contrived only, identity. Like yeah, like you know it's not really who they that, are. Yeah, for the consideration that they're acting in a way that they think is ex is is how they're supposed to act or something. If that's genuinely how they are, I don't care. But you know, you should no, just but, act like, however a, you want. Yeah, but it's know? such a a crafted stereotype, you know yeah. that's not how they were. They became Maybe. that way because it's like, oh, this is what it is to be gay. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. My gay friends have the same problem with that. They don't like it. Because they act like uh, people yeah, who can't are gay you have to act a certain way. Yeah, why, why can't, can't you, you just normies? have normative with you, you know? <laughs> well, normies are like the same sort of contrived stereotype. Well, yeah, okay, mm. but I mean, like, normies and, like, okay, like, where I'm at, most Act. of the people that I know, like, <laughs> don't have this pre-crafted identity. Like, yeah. even, like, they, they're, they, yes, they're where the clicks were, like, you know, it's the California girls, like, oh, my God. But, like, like most, totally, most yeah. girls, like, weren't that way, you know, they were just kind of, like, themselves. You know, yeah. you didn't really have, like, this, you do have this general mass identity, but you don't have it to, like, that kind of stereotype. I mean, you're not a cartoon character. Yeah, that's you know. it. Like, that's yeah. the reason I don't like it. It just, it's yeah. so replayed and it just seems so contrived. Well, there's no originality there. It's like these people are trying to fit some kind of stereotypical image. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Are they intentionally doing it? I mean, I can't say, but no, it, it yeah. comes I mean, off that way. Straight men do the same as well, of course. They yeah. try to be manly and masculine. Chad. They're insecure about their sexuality. If you call yeah. them gay, they're offended. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Uh, I was it's talking like... to someone about the same thing where some people I know 
like will say things about women they see in public and i'm like are you doing this because you are genuinely attracted to them or are you just trying to fit some sort of stereotype to mask you know present your masculinity you know not being gay i don't, I don't all, do that, but shit. that 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 guy looks handsome <laughs> she's hot i would fuck her you know like yeah okay w- would you really i, but, I would, you know, off topic yeah. again i was like what i don't even know what they were talking about again <laughs> This is all social shit, you know. It's to do with socialism. Point is, Barrow is a moron. Let's all we can all agree on that. Yeah, Barrow's a piece of shit. He didn't read. Barrow anything. was no. the original socialist, except he wasn't even a socialist. So he had socialistic tendencies, I think, which is why Marx developed. Uh, which is why Marx later. got really like, yeah, Marx really shat on him. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Marx. Would, I think Marx. Would, on yeah, page. we're on like a page seven. Well, so it is yeah. precisely the basis. Continuing, it is precisely the basis of civil society. The need that ensures the continuance of society and guarantees its necessity, which exposes its existence to continual dangers, maintains in it an element of uncertainty and produces that continually changing mixture of poverty and riches, of distress and pos- prosperity, and brings about change in general. Page eight uh, from, I assume Bauer's work. Or I'm not. I'm not sure who's. He's quoting. Uh, yeah, it must be Bauer. Uh, compare the whole section. Quote: Civil society, which has been drawn up along the basic lines of Hegel's philosophy of law. Civil society, in its opposition to the political state, is recognized as necessary because the political state is recognized as necessary. Political emancipation is, of course, a big step forward. True, it is not the final form of human emancipation in general, but it is the final form of human emancipation within the hitherto existing world order. It goes without saying that we are speaking here of a real, practical emancipation. Man emancipates himself politically from religion by banishing it from the sphere of public law to that of private law. Religion is no longer the spirit of the state which, in which man behaves, although in a limited way in a particular form and in a particular sphere, as a species being, in community with other men. Religion has become the spirit of civil society, of the sphere of egoism, of bellum omnium, uh, omnium, eh, <laughs> of bellum omnium contra omnis. Yeah, don't, I don't know what bellum means. Isn't bellum war? Yep. What? Omnium is, you know, uh, all. Omnis is man against, like, the war against all. Yeah, it's it's the war of wall against all. Uh, get you some culture, people. Learn some Latin. Yeah. It is no longer it's the essence of community, but the essence of difference. Deleuze can't get away from you. <laughs> it has become the expression of man's separation from his community from himself and from other men as it was originally it is only the abstract avowal of specific perversity private whimsy and arbitrariness the endless fragmentation of religion in North America for example gives it even externally the form of a purely individual affair it has been thrust among the multitude of private interests and ejected from the community as such but one should be under no illusion about the limits of political emancipation. The division of a human being into a public man and a private man, the displacement, the displacement of religion from the state into civil society, this is not a stage of political emancipation, but its completion. This emancipation, therefore, neither abolished the real religiousness of man nor strives to do so. So you know a bit a bit of Hegelian autism, by the way. And, uh, actually, it's not not so much of Hegelian autism. Yeah. You know, when he says about civil society, is no lo- it is no longer the essence of community, but the essence of difference. It has become the expression of man's separation from his community, from himself and from other men, as it was originally. This is true. 
in one sense, and it's not true in another, uh, in which you know this is perfectly dialectical, as, as, as always you know is the case. One, this breaks the natural community, you know, the community which was the extended family of you know the tribe or whatever, in which you know you lived in your little tribes, you know that was your family and that was your community, you lived among yourselves, you produced for yourself. Under civil society, that's broken. Now your community is the entire community of the economy. Uh, and that goes beyond your co your little corner of the world. It's no longer the people you grew up with. It's no longer the people you live around. And it's not even no, any longer the people of your city. It's no longer the people of your own state. Like it's, it just goes, your com the community in which you engage with at that point, you become part of a, another kind of community. You know, it's the economic community. The whole new fa kind of dependency in which, you know, uh, Marx treats as, you know, everybody's private. No, not at all. Uh, if it appears private, it's only like the superficial veneers. Like absolutely, in capital, the proof is the other way. The whole other way. The whole thing is just about the tightest social web we have ever had in the strangest way. The, the thing is, obviously, it's it's unrecognized as that. But it's most definitely there. And as a matter of fact, plenty of people recognize it. They just don't recognize it as something that is, uh, you know, like the older form of community. In which you knew, I, you know, you know, pure, you know, personally who you're dealing with and everybody you're dealing with. Uh, you know, now the whole thing is just so extended, it's just impossible. I guess this is kind of similar to like a Neo time, his whole thing about mechanical and organic solidarity. Um, you can say that, yeah, and which like this is like an automatic community. You're forced into it and uh, you can kind of go and move around like with who you're going to deal with, uh, ideally. Obviously in the real world that you're kind of usually screwed to like wherever you can get ex employed. Uh, but this is basically the capacity to have a different kind of community which is not necessarily, it's not your family, it's not your friends, um, it's not the people you live with, and yet it's a community, it's a, a really solid social relation, which is like, you know, supposedly this whole labor thing that goes on is private, it's not really, it's a, a lot of it's, you know, give and take, uh, demand. Uh, the only people who ever really seem to produce, like, in fully private are entrepreneur, you know, that whimsical entity known as the entrepreneur, you know, that uh, comes up with something... Uh, and then goes like, oh, you know, I'll make like a thousand of these and like go and sell them, you know, I'll become rich. I'll become the next Bill Gates. Uh, that's the only time it really works that way. Other ways, like nowadays, everything is so, so interconnected and meshed, like it's basically a planned production. <laughs> it's uh, pretty close, so. So I think Marx is wrong there, you know, he says, you know, it's a, it just, you know, it's a, it's a private whimsy and arbitrary. Not really. Uh, you're forced into it. It's not really arbitrary. Uh, how you're forced into it and what you're forced into. Well, part of it's like... Uh, but, you know, that's kind of its aim. You know, it's a way to get rid... To get away from the constraints of natural community. Of you know, the, or It's a whole different way of dealing with people. So, yeah, it's not community as such, but it's uh, not exactly not a normal... Well, not a sense of community either. I don't know if I made myself intelligible at all. <laughs> I'm barely awake, but yeah, I understand. <laughs> How much longer is this section? I thought it was like section one. It goes on for a long time. Section 2 is much shorter, apparently. That is so bullshit. It's like, chapter 1, and like the chapter 1 is like the whole fucking book, and it's like, oh, chapter 2 is like... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a couple sentences. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we'll just actually, we should actually just leave it here. Uh, we've been going mm, on for quite long. long. We're all losing our minds, uh, and like... You... <laughs> talking about things that just don't uh, don't quite fit in with the text very 
very off the wall. But yeah, I, I expect uh, if anybody listens to it and uh, they're Marxist, uh, they're going to have heavy disagreements with me and like say I'm full of shit. You're if you say sued. so, if you say so, sued, I say Charlotte. bring it. Bring it. I will argue. I'm open to debate. You could change my mind. They're not going to debate you. They just want to say you're shitty and abstract. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm an anonymous I user. Just, Fuck you. <laughs> I, I would debate Muke. What? He's not going to debate you? Of course. We all know the what, what the truth behind his not debating me is. I mean, I really want you to debate uh, Rue. But uh, well, he wouldn't he's debate gonna, with me. He's gonna he's cower. He's just gonna cower. Dude, he just ignored all Tell my things. I tweeted him. I tweeted him. Like a couple other people tweeted him. Convince some him guy. I was talking. To, one of the guys. The guy who started me on the talking on about like Maoism on Twitter. He, he says Rue messaged him asking like who the fuck I was. But oh. Rue didn't message me. Like you know, it's like that's how. Uh, I guess that's how. Uh, Afraid because because he doesn't know anything. I mean, he lost all or he dismissed all of his ghost writers, including me. Sorry, and uh, <laughs> yeah, he um he 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 has nowhere to. I mean, maybe Finbol will write up something or something like that, and he'll yeah, just go yeah. off of that. But yeah, if you debated Finbol, point is, I think it would be the Jewish question: merchants, markets, civil society, the state. It's all spooks. And uh, you should all <laughs> message Jason Unrahe and tell him, hey, talk with A.W. Don't say debate. <laughs> I actually don't want to. I don't actually want to debate with him. Yeah, I actually just like debate. like to like talk to him and like discuss things. Doesn't even well, have to be recorded. I also think it needs to be said. Uh, there's only one solution to uh, this Jewish question. A final <laughs> solution, if you will. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. By Perubu. But all right, we'll leave it there. Uh, I think I'll cut out like <laughs> some of the like banter that just went on. Just kind of good idea. Like yeah. But all right, see you guys. Bye. Goodbye. Good night. Yeah.